Hello, my name is Dominic Underhall House and welcome to another episode of Moonbreaker. In today's episode, we're going to be looking at one of the new additions to Beasts and Blooms and it's part of the new player experience. And we're going to be having a look at the new tutorial and on top of which, we're going to be trying to look at all the different rewards and seeing if we can unlock our beautiful Foam Maximus and have a go at looking at the what the different paint textures are going to look like or paint colours are going to look like as well. So for now, if you enjoy the video, please do like, subscribe, comment, join us at the Patreon down below. Anything you can do to support the channel is greatly appreciated. And for now, we're going to jump straight into the tutorial and see what it fancies offering us. So. The thing I really like about these is that they now have rewards for each section of the tutorial. One of the things I was feeling back recently is that I feel like a lot of stages in the game are lacking that sort of in-game reward. It's very much a your reward is getting better at the game. Will you learn how to survive in the reaches? I'll show you a good time. I mean serious informative training. Okay, this is already more together than the last time I played this where it just repeated that over and over again. A notorious smuggler from Blasco's refuge. Okay, crankbait is here. This is the gloom side crankbait, I believe. Let's party! Yes, crankbait. You can admire the model and paint job of any unit. It's not part of combat. They're just magnificent. They are magnificent. There we go. Yeah, that that's, uh, does look like the uh, gloom side crankbait skin. Pretty sweet. Moonbreaker is a yeah, foam Maximus. Attack and use their abilities each turn. That it is. Looks like they failed to capture my undeniable allure. I think these are identical. No difference whatsoever. Best model in the game. I really do like someone point out on the Reddit, I love the wonky gun barrels. It's so great. Let's start with a melee attack. Hucha! Hucha! Touch their rival before they can attack. Okay. So we're going to do the clicking, because there are times where you can like right click and ruin it. Melee. Whoop. I like that it's got these, so this was in the last version we played as well, where it's got like the explanation of the visualization for melee range. Nice okay, and clear. Lord. In a real battle, rival melee units will counterattack any attacking unit touching its base. So watch yourself. Yeah, specifically Aria. melee, nice that it clarifies that. Aria, a ranged unit. A ranged unit, okay. Let's get it on. Still do like Arya's like socially awkward sniper Range vibe. Attacks have a hit chance based on a unit's distance from the target. Abilities cover, and other units may also affect accuracy. Let's use Arya's ranged attack to snipe that rival. Okay, good to know. Range attack, ninety-one percent. I mean, I'm just gonna move to make sure we don't fail. Oop. There we go. Because I'd love it. I I bet you I'd fail in this tutorial. She's making friends already. Not sure that's what that was. More foam maximuses. Way better than the training dummies. Notice how distance affects attack accuracy. Yes, it does. You can go there. And you can go there. There we go. Like I'm I'm not using this to sort of show the controls off too much, because obviously I know the controls, but I wanted to see how well input the actual uh like the actual tutorial is and how well implemented it is. Got a little captain now? I still do like the little hologram, more like shadow over here when we're Captain looking at something. And and it's quite nice. Seems a little showy if you ask me. <laughs> yes, Maximus complaining, the complaining about other people being showy. With details on deployment cost, there we go. Attack, health, and I mean, this is different now, and obviously the health is different anyway, but this is just a tutorial, so this is just a, you know, whatever it is. Leadership cost to deploy, resource generation, active ability and cost to use, attack type and power. Base size, passive and keywords, unit speed, and health and armor. I still really like the unit speed change. It's really nice. There we go. There's his tool tip. Where's Maximus? There we go. An honorable death bot. Let's try one of his chivalrous abilities. Let's do just that. I'm guessing it's either Shield of Hope first, or they're going to put something down for us to slap around. I'm happy with slapping around. I think that's what it was last time. A little bit laggy here. I've already clicked this. We're just waiting for some enemies to come in. Also, to clarify, I love this arena. Like, this is actually so well put together for a Methodory Training Academy. Like, you got the stairs here with a little barrier. Come on. Okay, we have to click that again. But, like, this really does look like a training site. It almost looks like a sort of Cerebro look underneath. Oh, no, we're doing Shield of Hope first. Okay. There we go. Again, yep. This bar's always very useful. I think it's 
I love that it's got a little explanation because that wasn't in the original version and you literally just have to figure out what it was. It took me quite a while. Intriguing. Some people figured out far quicker Let's than me, but I'm not always the sharpest knife in the drawer. Synergy. You can use and combine unit abilities in creative ways to enhance your strategy. Like, can I, Maximus? Wow. Thank you for clarifying. <laughs> Which is two now, which is interesting, because uh, originally it wasn't going to be two. Yoink. Yeah, originally it wasn't gonna, not going to be, it wasn't two, it was one. What is unusual here is that uh, crankbait's damage has increased, but Ixtilior's hasn't. So that's an interesting... Uh, ooh, I love the way the models fall apart, but it's an interesting choice. So if we just go here... Grappling chain. Oh, oops. Well, let's go to like here, and this might actually just pull me into range anyway. Yeah, it will do. We're gonna hurt our own uh, crankbait here, but it doesn't really matter. It's fine. Crankbait's use. It's also good. Excess to surplus to purpose. That's the phrase, isn't it? You'll find many ways to get fancy with ability synergies to better strategize on the battle. Oh, thank you, Maxwell. I'm sure I will. You're ready to graduate to more advanced concepts. Okay. Okay, so that was it. It's uh, that's about the length of the entire previous tutorial. So it's nice to have it a little bit, yeah, a little bit shorter, a little bit swifter, and then in different tutorial modules. And then we can claim our with honors crest. So that is for anyone that doesn't know already. When you build a new unit, you've got the roster banner here, and the crest is now something you can unlock. And then you can just put your different patterns, like this is one of the new ones, and then... Uh, have I unlocked any other new ones yet? No, I think that, that's the newest one I've got. So yeah, you can just sort of make your little banner, change your colours around. So for anyone that hasn't played with this before, great fun to do so. And there you go, you can uh, make yourself, an, if you're a Magic player, an Is It Coloured one. So there you go, that's what the, uh, the banner crest does. And tutorial number two, more advanced techniques and a valedictorian roster banner shape. So, this is the one I haven't done before. So, I'm well, curious as to how this goes. To basics, it's time to reach for glory. Winning a battle requires a bold and attractive leader. Yeah, it's not you, Maxus. But yeah, the, um, the deployment thing is completely different to how the original tutorial was, so it'll be really interesting to see or how this a works. Former a former death bot. There we go. Leadership points to deploy your fearless crew on the field. Yes, we do. Pops up here. Your bridge is displayed at the bottom of the screen. When you have enough leadership, you can spend it to deploy units. You'll gain leadership each turn to add more units to the battle. And the good thing about this as well is I think it's now a lot clearer. There we go. Every time, leadership will increase by the amount indicated. So it doesn't say anything now, but I think that's probably not ideal, but at least we know it's there in-game. Okay, deploy Detonia. Detonia, where would you like to go? Over here. I still love Detonia in that like last game. And Detonia can't take any actions until their next turn. Correct. Thank you, Maximus. Boop. Conflicts arise across the reaches. A savvy leader should scan the environment for different. Okay, we're getting cover. That's nice as well. This is really nice because there are yeah, there's three types of cover in here, and we've not really got that much information on them until we get to these sort of things. So yeah, reduces accuracy, blocks movement, and reduces accuracy. Blocks movement and blocks line of sight. Perfect. This is starting to look like a real fight. Destroy those fashionable, fashionable training dummies. dummies. How cover affects your attacks and abilities. Okay, so destroying the targets, we're literally just gonna lob Detonia's thing over here because we know how this works, but we know that we can move around here and get the accuracy, look through here. So this is all good. That using a unit's abilities costs cinder. cinder. Every turn, you'll generate cinder based on which units are deployed. Which is again, it's nice. That there's a lot, a lot more cinder generation, but it's not excessive anymore. At one point, it felt like if you had the cinder, cinder generation units, it was nuts. But if you didn't, it was nothing. Now it's a bit more reasonable. Map, like cinder carts, piles, and spheres. Cinder things move Arya to touch the cinder cart, and then we get the we do get it next turn. So at the start of our next turn. Uh, there you go. Get additional cinder. Perfect. How in the heck do you win? That is a good bit of tutorial advice, how to win. 
Oh, we're being asked to deploy. Oh, please say we get to play with Tipu. I love Tipu. Accumulate ten victory points or defeat the rival captain. Easy. Earn victory points by holding a control point uncontested for an entire turn. That sounds good to me. Try moving your units into the control point to Ooh. capture them. Then we'll see if you can hold it while facing your rivals. And we're obviously just going to deploy. In fact, if we're trying to just hold it, we'll just use snailing. That'll work for me. Let's see where the opponents come in. Oh. Did we really have to hold it with no opponents? Is that... Awaiting directive. Sure. Okay, at least the rival units are coming now. I do like more units. Yes. Okay, so where's our rivals? Okay, so we need to deal with three things, which is quite interesting. Can we deal with all three? I mean, this can just poke Tetonia. Oh, it says capture it by eliminating rival units. Okay. So this placement... Okay, we can actually get to here. So Snelling can just move back slightly. Exterior, can we get melee range and touch Beatrice? Maybe? So we'll do this first. We'll pop over here. Shoot and poke. And then we might as well use Detonia to lob an explosive over here. We know Beatrice can't move, so we only have to worry about Tipu, and that can just come right over here. And then I guess Shield of Hope. Why has Tipu got 12 health? Is that normal for Tipu? That seems like loads. Maybe I'm just a bit mistaken here, but I didn't think Tipu was going to have 12 health. Yeah, so they're going to take this control point away from us, which is fine, but then we can just go and play silly buggers over here and just kill everything. For instance, if we go just about here. Oh, we're not getting... Oh, we've got three attack in this version. So for some reason, this one isn't generating Cinder. But that's absolutely fine. We didn't. It's not like we've got a Detonia or anything to specifically need Cinder. So we've got a 93 if we go here. So let's just go for that. And... Aria hasn't moved, but we can just we can do this, and then we at least control the control point. Uh, who's got the melee attack left? Oh yeah, He's silly. Old. So we might as well go for that. No more attacks. Weird that we don't get Cinder, but fine. It's just tutorial. It's just trying to help us get there. It's also interesting. It mentions that this is the way of capturing the control point, where we've actually captured it already. We can just get Tipu in here. Boop. There we go. So. I'm not sure that's quite worded the best, because it maybe if it put all of them in the control point with us, then capturing it would be better. But that didn't quite line up with what we were expecting. Your victory points will increase at the end of your turn. The more control points on the map you hold, the faster you'll accrue victory points. That concludes. Okay, so nice work. that's not actually correct. The victory points increase at the start of your turn, not the end of your turn. Unless that's changed. I don't think it's changed. Like, it's start of your turn, isn't it? I'm going mad. I'm fairly sure it's start of the turn. Either way, tutorial module number two done and dusted. And we can see what we unlock for this one. And this is the Valedictorian banner shape. So that same banner we looked at before, we now have a new shape for it, which is quite a nice one. Tutorial three, face off against your rivals in a match at the method or landing pad. So we're actually gonna be on a map and we get a roster banner pattern this time, which is nice. Strange that there was a yeah the the wrong phrasing for victory points being at the end of a turn rather than beginning because that's quite a big difference, and also yeah that that activity didn't quite work. Oh, we got our paint scheme now, nice. So our paint schemes are going to show up in the uh, in the tutorial. That's really awesome. This was not a finished job. This was a uh, I wanted to try out glitter paint, so I just threw some onto Exterior, and I was like, yeah, it'll be fine. I still need to finish my other paint job. Actually, the uh, my pride flag Exterior. A real spicy test.
Your rivals will have reduced health. Oh, and you'll okay. need all the hot knowledge I taught you to defeat. Hot knowledge. Thank you, Maximus. Okay, so I mean, here I don't feel particularly threatened, so we're just gonna pop down. Dead eye. Uh, I mean, we could just place Maximus there, but I don't really think it matters too much either way. Because Dead Eye's just got the ability to at least give us a bit more accuracy, and we can just deal with more things next turn. I mean, honestly, I'll probably just play Maximus and save Cinder for Tifu. Okay, so now we can get half of that dealt with immediately. So if we just, like, shoot here and move back to this side. Hang on. Is this back to the old layout where we can't move through here anymore? What's happened here? Well, that's bizarre. Uh, can't even sort of justice anything, so we'll just shield of hope ourselves. And I guess for this purpose we put Beatrice in. She just smacks hard. Sure, really shows us ourselves an turn for accuracy. Weird that we can't fit in that gap now. We definitely could before with a large base. Something feels different there, and I'm not sure what it is. It's not entirely... Yeah, so this is fine if they want to spin. Especially if they want to hit us, we just hit back and we'll just turn on them and go full damage onto the enemy captain. If Ixtilio can fit through this gap. Yeah. I, I'm honestly probably just going to ignore these crew and just hit the enemy captain if this is a... Uh, where are they going? Yeah, Maximus can take your hit. We've got more than enough health here and we're already doing a tutorial game so we can just nuke them down basically. What are our three drops? Again, we're probably just going more damage but there's not much damage available there so I'm probably I'm actually just going to go to Tony or Maximus here just to keep pushing. Okay, Stitchy could be a problem. Um, but do we care? No, we're not here to care. So let's just attack this first. Uh, we will, in fact, we can just move up back here. Take the shocks; it'll be 100. percent Move in here, get our spin and hit. And then, because we've got multiple options, what we can play, we'll pop Detonia down here to block it in, and then Maximus just a bit further back for additional pressure. Shield of Hope, Detonia, I guess. And that will do. Oh, we can't release those as anything, apparently. Oh, we didn't have a Cinder after that. There we go. So we've got this one completed. Again, still find it weird that we couldn't fit through these gaps. Something like, I didn't think these bases, even though they look amazing, I didn't think that they were supposed to actually change how the game plays. Like, I thought it was supposed to be just a graphical thing. But yeah, weird. We'll, uh, we'll make sure we feed that back. So a couple of bits of feedback for the tutorial, but this is so much more polished than the previous one. I love the fact that we had the, like, the training grounds, the actual little area there to try it out, which is awesome. And then we've got the, uh, the progression now, we've got multiple rewards for it, it's really, really nice. So usually when the opponent does healing, we're nearing the end of their turn. For some reason, I don't know why, but the bots like to do that later, but Maximus still hasn't shot yet, so I guess there's that as well. And we've got to deal 10 damage, so we've got 5, oh no, sorry, 6. Seven, eight, nine, ten. Easy. Bash me. There you go. Oh, we're going for the Maximus shots. Okay. Those bullets also, for some reason, they look bigger as well. Like, I swear they didn't used to be that big. Uh, we're just going to rush this damage in. That's on the assumption that we don't hit Dotonia with our own Beatrice here. Um, yeah, you can play a Tipu. Yeah, that's fine. Sword of Justice, hit here, move in, and shoot. There we go. Oh, we have Maximus. Flourishing indeed. Okay, we've got three completed. This one was the banner pattern. And then most importantly is the reward for the last one, where we have to play, I think it's a full game, isn't it? Oh, we actually get XP for that as well. That's really nice. Work our way through this season track reward. Getting all those lovely resources. Okay, and we are now on to claiming this. Tutorial number four. So I think this one is just a full game by the sounds of things. And the reward is the best thing going. I'm also hoping either tonight or tomorrow, very soon, to just listen to the audio drama. So in the next Moonbreaker video, 
keep an eye out for hopefully me talking a little bit about the uh, the audio drama because that's something I'd really like to be able to at least sort of mention you know whether I enjoyed it or not it might be not be in the next video it might be in the next couple at some point but definitely something I'm looking to do so we're an Astra this time to Methador some low life is causing chaos in the Serenus. Okay, this is not Ooh. a test. I need you to take care of those malcontents without my help. I've got a massage appointment. <laughs> Make me proud. <laughs> oh, I love it. Also, this map looks so different with the color shift. It's really nice. Like, because this part looks very similar, but this is a lot darker and sort of grimier, but not in a bad way. Like, grimier by design. And this looks so much cleaner on the map now. So we're against Astro. They're all the way up there. So we're just going to run up towards them. Um, we're a Maximus fan this time. Also, I swear these are a bit smaller. Which could actually be quite nice, because they, when they were quite large before, it was quite prohibitive at some point. So, nice bit of reworking on the maps in general here, it looks like. Uh, I'm not worried about the Cindersphere, because they don't have anything to use it on. So it depends if they deploy anything. I'm hoping they would do. And we can just poke whatever they deploy. Oh yeah, we should have shielded ourselves. We didn't even think about that. Okay, good. We can attack that. Uh, we can also attack Maximus. I actually think uh, Deadeye is the better target. Because Deadeye is just super powerful. We missed a 90% shot there, really? Come on now. Uh, so, we are going to shield of hope ourselves this time. And we're just going to pop. Again, we could do multiple different things, but Beatrice seems like the right call. And just go right in front of them. Make it so they can't really get away if they want to. I think this is a pretty reasonable spot. They can take this cinder, but what have they got to spend it on? Just, I suppose they can do four damage with it with one of their units. Yeah, take the point. Just don't shoot Beatrice Maximus. Shoot something other than Beatrice, otherwise, AI issues. Okay, in fact, it almost looks like the smog is like flowing over the whole map. You can see it. Yeah, just the sand coming off to here. The smoke up this way. There's a bit more this side. Does it happen everywhere? No, so there is less of it the further up the map you go. That's a quite nice touch. It does sort of, sort of go between it. It's almost like sepia-ish down here with the foggy, disgusting swamp. Okay, I still couldn't believe we missed one of those. So here we are going to be stealing some Cinder and trying to take out Maximus if he doesn't move too far. Depending on where he moves, we'll do something. Beatrice has got... Okay, I mean, that's fine. Because we, we've we got basically six damage here and a couple of extra here and there. Ooh, a jailbreak. Okay. Oh, are we actually locked down? Interesting. I didn't think that was quite touching us. I guess so. Right. So I guess here we're attacking jailbreak, but can we make it so that we kill jailbreak first? Because if we've got eight damage here, then yeah, we can kill this. So we'll just deal the damage to jailbreak here. Move back here. Bring in good old Exterior. Spin. Um, what do I want to hit with? So Beatrice would take less damage. So we'll let Beatrice get the hit in. She only takes two. We'll smash this. I'm actually going to shield mm, probably still ourselves. And deploy. And Crankbait is the nearly the most attack, but Deadeye just only between them. Do add a little bit more. And we are definitely on the uh, let's put more damage on the battlefield plan right now. Let's just put everyone up the front. We don't need to worry about things. Um, I'm actually going to pin Maximus in place. Because I don't want him to be able to run anywhere. He's tricky. He's awkward. We could have stolen some Cinder, but they don't have much to spend it on. And so we're just going to control the AI game. Yeah, Talk about this as if we're playing a real game. And just try and take it slow. Uh, you They've only got two damaging units after Maximus is dead, and we've got way more than enough damage on the battlefield. So we're going to be able to start turning it onto the captain, as well as clearing out the units. And that's the sort of board state that we're trying to get to. So, not sure what they're going to do here. Yep, Maximus just going to dawdle around a little bit. Probably shoot... Detonia would be what I'd pick. Okay, so Deadeye's going over there, so we do need to now actually... Pretend we want to deal with Deadeye. We'll do it over a couple of turns. There's no rush. We can like move up here, take things, kill other stuff. In fact, one, two, three. We, we've got six damage, so yeah, we can actually just take out Deadeye. And still take out Maximus, and still head there. So, 
uh, we are going to have enough cinder as well. Even better. Okay, and that's a good target for the uh, Exilior spin. Okay, so let's just not take any risks. Okay, Maximus seems super fast here. Like, that's really fast. Now we'll bring Detonia over here for this. Then I can Ozos herself to get the buff. We, I mean, we made a mistake here, but who, who's really worried? It's fine. I'm actually going to move. Hmm. Maybe I can't even move out the way fully. Oh, because Maximus is going to be dead. Let's try moving down here. We'll take this attack. And then, can we get... Can we get to a point where we actually hit all three of them? Yeah? Maybe all four? Okay, this looks like a good Sword of Justice. <laughs> yeah. Take out a bunch of their Cinder Generation. Deal loads of damage to their units. And we still get to deploy more things. Anything else that ignores stuff like Torian? No. So we're just going to put a Tipu down over here. And again, we're going to be... We could start looking going for points, but this isn't a points game. We're here for killing the opponent's captain. This is a tutorial. We're not here to do anything else. The only thing I really want is to try and just sort of play it safe and just win. Not get... Like, I've lost to AI before. I don't want to do that more often than I need to. Funny enough, I think that might be one of the only mistakes they could do, because now they can't double activate Torian very easily. Yeah, this is all fine. And the interesting thing as well, with even with Torian's debuff, we've got very good chances of hitting it. Because we've got Detonia who does AoE, so that hits it, this spin hits it, so we can actually just guarantee these die, which is very nice. Uh, Axel Pyro, okay, so this is where we wish we had a jailbreak to just pop it there or something, but again... We can probably just kill most of these things. With you till the end. Is that in range of Sword of Justice? It is. Okay, even better. So we'll Sword of Justice first. We'll get our lob explosives. Can we get all three of them without hitting Ixtaleel? Mm. Maybe not. I mean, that does, but then it hits Detonia. I think Detonia can live, so maybe it, let's just do it. We're not, we're not bothered. This is all fine. Instructions. Uh, to be honest, at this point, I think we just start racing. Let's not try and be fancy. Let's try and just go for damage over and over again. Maximus can just pop in here, get some more damage down. Uh, probably move over here to block this. So Tipu is going to be slightly out of range, but we can just tag Beatrice, get a bit of damage in there. I guess we shield of hoping because he's our best unit. Uh, we've still got more damage. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to move Tatonia down. Uh, yeah, might as well take the shot here. Move into this location. We might as well Ozo's ourselves. And for f more units, we can just put down one thing. So what's the best thing we want to put down? I mean, Toxoid does a good job, I guess. But it's nothing special. Crankbait's the most damage. We'll put Crankbait down over here. We're not in here for anything other than just messing around, finishing this, and unlocking the best unit in all of Moonbreaker. Also, there's very little space for this uh, Astra to move now. But this tutorial feels so much cleaner, because this is just a real AI game. That's the thing, it's not a, it's not anything other than an AI game with an extra little boost to it. So we've got, you you start out with learning the basics, then you learn how the rules work, then you've got like a toned down game to get the hang of it, and then you play a real game. So at one point in the uh, client there was the whole um, play against five AI games without telling you before you end up getting to your PvP games, and I didn't like that at all. But now this is so much clearer because it does build you up through AI games and having that sort of half scale game and full scale game is a really nice way of easing people into it without it feeling patronising plus you are incentivized to do so because that foam Maximus is still my favourite skin I actually think it might be more than all the pre-release ones it's, it's so funny, I love it okay, do we have enough damage? they've got 8 health 
we can probably get our captain there if we just kill Beatrice. Or if we kill Beatrice and get extended, uh, we'll be fine. So let's let's do the range attack first, and then what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to lob explosives and just kill multiple things around, including. Can I get it a little further? Look at this little flashing light there from all the because the cinder pile explodes if you deal damage to it. So this is going to just do tons, and then that's going to explode and just melt people, which really means we can just take a nice easy route. And get the Tipu kill, because everybody loves a Tipu we kill. Did it. An we did it! For you and an invigorating massage for me. Congratulations on completing your training. Thank you, Maximus. In Maximus Instructor. There we go. I like it that Maximus and Instructor add the Methodory Academy in the lore, and then he's the one teaching us here as well, but he's just such a great character. If you haven't listened to Astra's uh, story, go ahead and do so. Maximus makes an appearance, and it's great. Also, this is, I believe, the normal amount of XP for an AI game, so it's a really nice little addition there, and we're still getting unit XP as well. Beatrice is nearly out. What now? Uh, can we see? Oh, I guess currently at 6 out of 10, nearly at 7. Anyone with really fancy things? Detonia... Three to what? Max was at seven on his way to eight. Some of these look way bigger than they should do. Either way, there's some really, really cool things there. And now, come on, give us that claim button. Most importantly, we get the Maximus. So nothing happened there. In the I was hoping for a little, like, you've unlocked this. Oh, nice, it's got little new character things. I haven't actually clicked on these, even though I've read them through on the other client. So, we'll go all the way back up here. Zulazo Maximus paint because this I don't I don't even like this foam Maximus however look at this beautiful model so the foam being like a texture is interesting because I don't know how we're gonna paint it to meet that texture maybe we can unlock foam paints in the future that would be quite a cool thing to consider there dev team so I'm just gonna pick a couple of colors <laughs> I'm not what about just glowing glowing Maximus here Anybody want to make their opponents just actively sad? That is almost borderline painful. I like it so the actual model has enough texture in the foam that this actually does still look foamy. And so, oh, and his face is drawn on. Oh, that's so cool. I wonder if we do like a, a dark wash. Let's just pick like, where's the smoky one, bit of opacity. Nope, that's not opacity, this is opacity. If we just do a wash over it. Okay, that's way too much. Okay, so the wash doesn't bring out those features. They've not been picked out, but we can just draw them in if we need to. Grumpamus over here. We can just be like, uh, now we need maximum opacity and paintbrush. We can just go like, and this looks just as good to me. Frowny face. There we go. The fact that they're designed and like the little gum barrels are great. Okay, that's if we go closer, it'll be more right size. Now we can do this one. There we go. Our own foam Maximus. I love this. Bananamus. Oh, that is. There we go. That is now my Maximus skin. It's what I'm going to be doing. Hopefully you guys have uh, you think the same way about Maximus, the foam model that I do. I think it's adorable. This is absolutely going to be in the uh, the splash art for this uh, this video. This, and the thumbnail. This is absolutely what I'm picking. So <laughs> The tutorial is so much improved. It's so much cleaner. It does take you through good stages of like learning how to play the game. Like I said, there's a couple of hiccups still. A couple of bits that don't quite add up, but... It's it's all just a little bit of polish. It's not the end of the world. It's you know a nice series of changes to ease players in without being too confusing, and I think it's going to help people with the onboarding progress progress process in Moonbreaker a lot. So great job to the dev team. I love the environment for it. I love the rewards, and I'm going to be using them quite a bit from now on. If you've enjoyed the this uh, video, guys, please do like, comment, subscribe, join us in the discord come say hello over there join us on the patreon in the description you can just whatever you want to i love any form of interaction whatsoever and most importantly thank you so much for watching
and have a good day.